position um, I started in August, so the beginning of last semester, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And then um, tonight's co-hosts, Sarah and Shelby, if you all want to introduce yourselves. Hey everyone, my name is Shelby. I'm a first year medical student here at UK and I was a research ambassador last year. I'm sticking around as an advisor this year just to help out with different workshops and events. Um, hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm a senior here at UK. Uh, I'm a ag biotech major and a creative writing minor and I'm currently doing research in the uh, microbiology department. Perfect, thank you. And then um, we also have um, a team of 22 research ambassadors um, that are representing seven colleges, um, multiple discipline research discipline areas, and we've got um, several of our ambassadors joining us as well. Um, our goal for today's workshop is to help give you um, some information, some tools, and um, some skills so that you can move forward from tonight and uh, with confidence and writing a research proposal. And without further ado, I think I'm gonna turn it over to Shelby and Sarah. All right, thank you, Jesse. Like Jesse just mentioned, this is kind of an overview about what we're gonna be talking about tonight. This is really designed to help you all be very confident in writing and submitting your own research proposals. So we'll be going through some of the basics of what a research proposal looks like, um, we're going to walk through some previously funded proposals written by UK students who have applied to different opportunities. And then we'll also have an opportunity for you all to ask any questions that you may have. So when we're talking about what a research proposal is, other than it being something that you may be required to write for a funding opportunity, it's really designed to kind of formalize commitments from any party that's involved in the research. So I think of it kind of like a contract that's not only talking about what you will be doing, but it's also there to kind of protect you to make sure that your mentor agrees with what you're doing and they're, they are there to support you and that um, whoever is funding it knows exactly what's going on. It will help you build a plan of work and set timelines because you have these expectations from the beginning that you're following and it kind of gives you that structure that you may need and it requires you to think about all the resources that you need to successfully complete your project. Sometimes you start doing research and you realize you may have forgotten about a certain type of machinery or a um, someone that you may need to collaborate with. Writing a research proposal helps you think through everything in advance so that you don't have any kind of panic moment while you're doing research. The ultimate goal with writing a research proposal is to help you receive funding. And so we'll talk through ways to make you more successful and more likely to receive that funding. Just a few key reminders when working on a research proposal. The first is to know the program's proposal requirements. This may sound kind of simple, but some proposals require a statement that's up to a thousand words, whereas others require a statement that's up to 300 words, for example. And those are two very different types of proposals where you will change what you're doing for each of them. It's also important to write your proposal logically and clearly. We'll talk about what goes into a research proposal. But for example, if you have both a background section as well as methodology, you're not going to write about your methodology before you explain why you're even doing this research in the first place. You also need to know your audience. So if you're writing a research proposal for someone that's in your discipline, you're going to get to use more scientific terminology and more specific terminology than if you're writing something for someone who may not understand what's going on or may not have as much background information. So it's really important to know who you're writing to and what you're writing for. That way you're able to make a research proposal that's going to be as successful as possible. When you're writing a research proposal, you're answering these three principal questions, the what, the why, and the how. And so starting with the what, you want to make sure it's clear exactly what you're doing so that they understand what you're accomplishing, not only with the research proposal, but with your project in general. And so once you've explained what it is you're doing, that leads into the why. There's a lot of different research people can be doing, but ultimately your research has to prove that it's going to be beneficial in some way. You're not just doing research to do research, you're doing it because it's going to either add contributions to the field or because it's going to lead you to a new type of work. And so once you've established what you're doing and why it is you're doing it, you're also going to explain how you're doing it. And so that's that methodology I'm talking about. 
sometimes we have ideas that may be more difficult to execute. And so it's important to show that you have thought through exactly how you're going to accomplish these things that you're wanting to do. And so like it says at the bottom, if you're not addressing these basic what, why, and how, it's going to be a lot harder to get your research funded because this is the things that everyone looks for when figuring out what it is you're trying to do. When talking about types of research, we have both hypothesis-driven research and exploratory research. Hypothesis-driven research is what you're more likely to think of when you think of research. You have a specific question that you're trying to answer, and you're trying to click data in order to answer that one question. Um, this is what a lot of people think of when they think of like lab bench work or things like that. Exploratory research, on the other hand, is in more investigation. And so this is things like when you're conducting interviews or focus groups or when you're doing literature searches. And so those tend to be more qualitative, whereas a lot of times your hypothesis driven research is more quantitative. And these are both valid types of research, and they're both types of research that you can write research proposals for. All right. So elements of a research proposal, I know this looks like a lot of things, um, which is why it's very important to um, get an early start and just sort of take it little by little. Um, so initially we have your hypothesis or objective. So, you know, why is what you're doing important? Um, this, you know, really uh, initial lines is really is what going to um, speak volumes for your readers. So you uh, wanna make sure that it's you know, very clear and concise. And we move on to background literature, um, just sort of giving a, um, a general um, overview of what others have said about this topic and um, sort of what uh, other theories um, address what you're trying to um, research. And then we uh, move on to subjects for study. Um, this can be, uh, I guess, you know, human or you're stating you're doing an animal study. Um, so who are you collecting um, that, who is uh, what you will study to collect data and does your project require IRB approval? Um, that typically is for human studies um, that you will have to get IRB approval for that, um, especially so with a lot of paperwork. Um, then we move on to four, where you're sort of getting into the methodology of your, um, of your study. So what are the key variables and how will you define them and measure them? Um, data collection, how do you actually go about collecting the data for your study? Um, these are typically uh, detail-oriented as your um, whoever's uh, reviewing your research proposal will want to know if you can um, sort of, if it's realistic if you're gonna be able to get it done um, in sort of the time that you say you can. Um, and then we, you move on to um, analysis. How are you going to um, sort of qualitate or quantitate your data? Um, and then you move on to timeline, which is sort of where you give a general um, sort of guess on how long um, your study is going to take. Um, and then uh, you move on to budget. Um, so a, a lot of this, if you're worried about getting very specific with these things, with timeline and budget, um, you know, it's, it's not counting down to the very last dollar or minute. Um, it's just something where, you know, sort of a general, um, you know, guess on how much you think that this is going to take or how long. Um, and then, of course, uh, you move on to just sort of the last additional items that you should add in, like your uh, the student's role in the project and um, how it can be done remotely, as we've um, seen that that can be um, important these days of COVID and Zoom. All right. So uh, primary reasons for not getting funded. Um, a lot of times this just comes down to missing information and not following instructions. Um, uh, a lot of times when you're submitting a proposal, uh, just like as Shelby was mentioning, they do sort of outline a lot of guidelines that they want you to follow. So oftentimes people don't get funded just because they miss some of those guidelines. Um, and as I sort of touched on before, you, you, know, you wanna be clear and concise in what you're trying to convey. So uh, weak scores due to lack of clarity in research goals, 
a vague research plan, weak background info, um, incomplete budget. Uh, this, you know, writing a proposal is, is very um, detail oriented and it's um, just something where you're gonna have to take time to sort of make sure you have everything down. Um, and then of course, proposed research does not align well within the goals of the program. Um, so, you know, depending on what your research is, you'll have to um, make sure who you, you know, where you're applying to um, actually makes sense with what their goals are. All right, so this is just sort of a visualization of a budget worksheet. Um, as you can tell, there are several, um, you know, categories that you'll have to divide up that stipend into um, between, you know, travel or research costs, um, even, you know, personal and also living expenses um, are also included. Um, it, it's just something where you'll have to, um, you know, either talk with your, your mentor you know, to sort of help you figure out the cost of things since they'll probably have a better idea on what, um, on what things will cost. So this is an example ru rubric from um, the Sustainability um, Fellowship. Uh, as you can see, you know, proposal is well-written. Um, you know, the role of the student researcher is clearly articulated, um, but in particular, uh, what I'd like to point out is number three, uh, this project directly relates to at least one of the uh, UN 17 sustainability, uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, this kind of connects with, um, you know, it, what, what does the program want to see? What, what goals do the program, does the program have? So, um, you kind of just want to make sure that your, you know, your research applies to um, one of these uh, 17 goals, which um, we'll, we'll sort of touch on later and show you. And then um, this is for the Q, uh, Cure uh, ru rubric, which we'll also talk about. Um, that's another um, uh, research related thing um, that you can do. Um, as you can see, some sort of the themes, again, well written, um, you know, just this project is of significant interest uh, to be, you know, funded and have priority um, and just sort of um, just how is your research going to make an impact somewhere, essentially, is what uh, the people who are reviewing your research are going to want to see. So as I mentioned, the CURE Fellowship. Um, so it's the Commonwealth Undergraduate Research Experience. So as you can see, a you know, $5,000 uh, $5, uh, stipend for um, the summer of 2023. Really exciting stuff. Um, and so as you can see, these research areas are kind of, um, you know, sort of, if you, if your research applies to, you know, one of these areas, uh, you should definitely, um, you know, go for the fellowship, you know, sort of promote, um, you know, your work and, and your research. Um, and so important dates for this is um, that the application deadline is almost a month from now, so March 1st. So um, if you feel like this fellowship is something that you'd like to do, um, just sort of uh, start working on it ahead of time. I wanna add something quick and Jesse, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's also fev or not several, several stipends available for each of these research priority areas. So it's not just one stipend per area. That is correct. We will be, um, we have 14 CURE fellowships that will be awarded. And then Sarah's gonna also talk about sustainability and those, there will be five of those. Um, so specifically for this proposal, it's 300 to 1,000 words maximum. Um, so just sort of taking, you know, taking baby steps to sort of get it done very thoroughly to get the best proposal that you that you can um, to get it in by by March 1st, you know, is, is something that you, that you should think about if you'd like to apply this, you know, of course, include the um, you know, include your mentor into it, you know, they'll be able to help you with the proposal, you know, just make sure that people like read it and, and sort of um, 
so you can submit the best possible proposal that you can. Jesse, do you want me to click that link or is it just there for future student access? It's just there for access. The QR code will take you there as well. Um, and then here is the Sustainability Summer Research Fellowships. Um, as it sort of states, you know, 5,000 stipends awarded to five undergraduate students. Um, and this is sort of um, focused on the uh, sustainable research projects that I sort of mentioned before. Um, so this is a eight to 10 week program during the summer. And also that deadline is also March 1st. Very important. And then of course the QR code. All right. So what are these, you know, finally these 17 um, sustainable research areas that I've been talking about. Um, as you can see, they range from, you know, climate change to education to gender equality. Um, you know, if, you're, if your research sort of aligns with, you know, any one of these, um, I definitely encourage you to apply for this fellowship. Um, again, to put yourself out there, um, to add this to your resume, you know, to gain experience. Um, you know, uh, research fellowships are, are a really good way to sort of expand, um, you know, your experience and knowledge and also, you know, hopefully to have a good time as well, learning things. I just want to add that even if you don't think that your research is related to sustainability, I can almost 100% promise that there's a way to relate it. The biggest thing with that rubric that Sarah was showing a few minutes ago is that when you choose one of these 17 goals, you're able to explain how your research can relate to that goal. And so you may have to sit down and think about it. It may not be a super obvious tie to sustainability, but you likely can find a way that it's tied if you're interested. And um, going tagging along with what Shelby and Sarah were just saying, I'm going to put a link. Um, there is a new um, platform. Well, it was a, it officially launched um, this past fall. It's called Scholars at UK. And then if you type in your faculty mentor's name um, in the search bar, it will actually show you which one of the 17 sustainable, uh, sustainable development goals um, your mentor's research relates to. All right. And um, quite often, faculty's research um, will align or connect with several of these. Okay. So what are the requirements for this uh, sustainability fellowship? Um, the word requirement is a little bit larger, um, 500 to 1,000 words. Uh, but even, even with the other one that was 300 to 1,000, um, you know, the, the, de the more sort of, you know, detail and that you can, you know, add to sort of explain your research is going to help you out. So, um, so, you know, just a little bit what is it, you know, 200 extra words, um, it, it'll still um, it help you out. Um, and then it also requires a sustainability statement. And um, again, that uh, deadline. All right, so um, additional UK opportunities, like, there we go. So if you go to the this this page on the um, OUR website, you'll see that there is a lovely list of uh, different programs and fellowships that you can apply to. Um, some of them, you know, require um, you know statements and and whatnot. Some uh, some do not. Um, and uh, I believe that most, if not all, of these are on campus. Um, so very accessible. Thank you all. Um, so, whoops, my, here's my camera. Um, so our goal for this workshop is again, to give you all skills, um, give you some tools. Um, it's my pleasure to now share some um, previously funded research proposals 
just to help you um, better understand that um, every proposal, um, there's not a one size fits all. That um, depending on what your research is, working with your mentor, your research proposals can look vastly different while still including the um, pertinent information. Um, so Shelby, can we first look at Meredith? Um, Meredith was um, a CURE fellow last summer, and um, you'll note that she included some graphics in there, some background information. Um, she talked about her methodology. So going back to that, that one slide of the elements of a research proposal, and then the subjects for the study, um, you can keep scrolling. Um, uh, always include references, and then she included um, just a basic timeline as far as in uh, what she was wanting to accomplish during that summer project, and then a budget. And it can be a very um, just generic rough budget, um, but your proposal absolutely has to have a budget um, so that uh, the review committees know exactly what your plans are for that money. And it is perfectly okay if you are just going to use that $5,000 stipend um, to help pay for your work and any bills that you may have. Um, and so, okay, thank you, Shelby. We'll go to the next one, Asael. Um, Asael was a sustainability summer research fellow this past uh, summer. And then um, keep going. Now you all, your title page does not count in your word count, okay? And then um, again, hi, uh, bolded some of the key points um, for his research project. And then Shelby, if you wanna keep going down, um, identified the methods and then how his project related to sustainability. And then keep scrolling, Shelby, pretty please, thank you. Um, again, the budget. And again, it's perfectly okay. Last year's stipend was $3,000 for both sustainability and the CURE fellowship. This year, we increased it by $2,000 based off of um, student feedback. And so again, it's perfectly okay for you to use that money just to support your summer research efforts. And then we'll look at another. And as we're going through the next two, look at how not a single one of these um, is exactly the same. Okay, so Gretchen, this was a sustainability summer research fellow two years ago, and she had um, paragraph form, um, and so whatever your preference is perfectly fine. And so if you wanna break it out like this, again, it's perfectly fine. Um, again, sustainability statement, if you are applying for one of the sustainability fellowships, you absolutely need to identify how your research relates to um, sustainable development goals, okay? And then again, the approach and the budget. Um, at the bottom, you will note that um, only 10% of your stipend can be used for supplies. Our goal is for this money to benefit you all. Um, and we understand that some supplies are necessary. We just don't want the bulk of your stipend to be used on um, to cover supplies. And then um, I think if you scroll down, Shelby, uh, Gretchen's references, yes. You always wanna include your references. And then our last one, um, our last um, funded proposal was last year, um, Olivia was a CURE fellow with the Unite Diversity and Inclusion RPA. And she just broke it out like, these are the questions you're asking me, here's my answers. And that is perfectly fine as well. And so, Again, going back to that one slide of the elements of a research proposal, you you have limited words, um, so minimize any fluff words, any filler words. You really want to um, use every single word um, to benefit you. 
and fully explain your research proposal. All right, Shelby, keep going. And then the budget, it could be as simple as this. All right, and we do have this um, sample budget on the website. It's included on both of the CURE and the um, Sustainability Summer Research Fellowship like budget link. There is that, so you can um, download it. And um, there we go. And then references um, at the end. Okay, do you all have questions? So again, um, all right, Shelly, if you want to close out so then we can see, um, you all have all kinds of resources here, so ask questions. You can either type it in the chat or unmute. Nobody? Jesse, how much research experience do they have to have in order to apply to these summer opportunities? It depends. Um, so some of the research programs where you are just, um, where you're submitting an application that may have a few essay questions, um, they may not need any experience whatsoever. Um, the sustainability and the cure fellowships, uh, it depends. Um, typically, one to two um, semesters of research is helpful, um, especially if you are already connected with um, a mentor. Let's see, could research in clinical psychology be related to sustainability? Um, absolutely. Who is your mentor? And you all, please feel free to unmute. We're just having a conversation. Okay, so let me um, pull this up. And I will show you all how. Um, okay, so you all should see the scholars at UK. All right, so all you're gonna do is you put in, I just put in, um, the faculty's name and then so right here it tells you automatically know that um, her research aligns with the unite research priority area which is a cure fellowship and then it also her research aligns with the sustainable development goal number three um, so good health and well-being how do you find a research mentor I have a bunch of ambassadors on here that are more than happy to help you. Oh, really? I can I can answer that. Go for it, Sarah. Thank you. Christine. Um, <laughs> um so finding a research mentor, you came to the right place. Um, there's actually a really uh, nifty thing that will uh, soon be released um, called Forager One, and it's sort of just a search engine where you can look up, you know, essentially any professor in UK, and you can see their research and also be able to message them within that platform. Um, but if you're sort of just nervous about, you know, emailing a professor and, you know, stuff like that, there are resources on our website to sort of um, help you um, decide what to put in an email, um, just uh, how many people you should email within a department. It shouldn't be more than, than two. Um, so just sort of you know, figure out what your interest is and then, um, you know, whoever's, you know, in that department, you can sort of sort of look at their research and, you know, contact them and be like, hey, I'm really interested. Hopefully they'll see. Do you all want a sneak peek of Forager One? It officially launches campus-wide on yes. February 13th. Okay. Um, so what you will do 
Okay, so the easiest thing to do, except, okay. Um, so it's foragerone.com. And what you do is you will actually go, um, or can you all see this? Is that a yes? Um, okay. Uh, let me, it's O-U-R that you can write and then forge your one. Um, so for students, you all will simply go scroll right here and you'll create a profile. And so that will take you to forge your one where you are then, um, I'm already logged in, um, but you will select um, sign up in the upper right hand corner. Um, and then it will take you to log in and you use your link blue ID. And then from there, you will create a profile, which I think I've got, um, let's see, we'll just use my poor daughter. Um, you just create um, a profile, um, put that you're seeking opportunities. You can add an about you section, areas of interest, um, any experience that you have. And the reason this is so important for you all to go in and um, actually create and add stuff to your profile is because we have faculty that are seeking students, trying to connect with students. And what they can do is they can go here and search for students by major. If you're in the honors college, then you'll click honors and whatever your major is. Um, if you have a minor, whether you're undergrad, master, or doctoral student, and then they can also just search by students that are seeking opportunities. All right, so that's first things first is to create your profile and um, add some information about you, yourself. Um, for you all, so all of the faculty's profile information on um, Forger One was pulled straight from scholars at UK. So what I was showing you earlier, um, as far as searching um, your faculty mentor and how their research relates sustainability. That information was already pulled over to Forager One, and you as students can go through and refine your search if you know specifically like what department, um, which college you want to work in. Then you can go through here and actually refine your search there, or you can type in a keyword. So if you just put in psychology, we have 80 faculty um, here at UK that's doing um, that's doing um, psychological research. Um, if you put in computational chemistry, like Dr. Risco, our um, director, we've got 79 faculty at UK. Um, so this is a great tool for you all to use um, to narrow your search, take the you know 4,500 plus faculty that we have here at UK and narrow it down to a manageable list. So then you can really go through and continue refining that search till you get a list. Um, and then from there, you all, actually, let me just search the faculty that have posted projects. Um, so like Dr. Senna has a project that he's actively recruiting students for. Um, Mine says message because I'm, I'm the administrator, but for students, you'll actually, it'll say um, apply now. And from that, you're, it provides sample text for you and you can communicate with faculty within this portal. Um, and then you can also um, bookmark faculty, those kind of things. So that's an easy way. And we will, you'll learn a lot more about this in less than two weeks. Other questions? Oh, um, other questions? Uh, can I piggyback off what you said, Jesse? I think oh, another way that we can find like, uh, can you hear me? I don't know if my Wi-Fi is great. I'm in the library. <laughs> um, I think another way that's great to get connected like with a research mentor, say you have like a class that you absolutely enjoyed recently, like this semester or last semester, um, reaching out to that faculty member or if you're in their class right now, going up to them after class and like asking them about it and like what their 
um, researches and see if it interests you. And what's great, what's great about Forger One is that you can also go and like stalk them too and kind of know beforehand and then like be ready to ask them questions about their research just to show that you're interested. And then that also like kind of makes a connection uh, with you and that faculty member. So that's another way you can find a research opportunity. That's a great point, Christine. Thank you so much. Um, a lot of our ambassadors actually connected with their mentors by just how Christine um, was um, mentioning. Um, other questions. Do you all have questions about writing a research proposal? Um, wanting to get some money. Did we crush it? Okay. Um, well, if you all want to stick around, yes, who had a question? Um, hang on, I'm going to turn on my video. Sorry. Yeah. Um, do you have to use part of your stipend um, for your funding? Or can you? What do you mean? Like I was saying for some of the proposals that was like, you can use some of your stipend to, you know, for your um, purchasing of materials and like, you have, to, okay. Well, you don't have to. We've got some um, some labs, some faculty. Well, actually, Shelby, some of our previously funded. How did you all use? I used all my stipend to pay for my apartment rent <laughs> over the summer, just as if I was doing like a paid job. Okay. So let's see, Gretchen. I see Gretchen's on here. Yeah. I split mine up between, um, so I used mine to pay partially for like my rent and just cost of living. And then the other part, um, I wanted to learn how to do like a specific type of bioinformatic analysis for my project. So um, I supplement, like use that money to pay for a couple of classes to learn how to do that. Thank you. Absolutely. And then I see a question in the chat, is CURE the same thing as CERF? Um, it's still a, an undergraduate research fellowship that happens in the summer. Um, CURE is just, um, just another type of program, but it's, it's essentially the same. It's still a summer undergraduate research fellowship program. Um, it just has a fancy name. Um, uh, but yeah, and so like, which college are you in? I'm in the College of Arts and Sciences. Yes. Um, yes. So it is It is the same. And I encourage you all to apply for multiple fellowships um, just to increase um, your chances. Uh, however, you can only receive one fellowship. So no double dipping, but we absolutely encourage you all to apply for multiple um, so for you, you can apply for CURE, you can apply for sustainability, and you can apply for the College of Arts and Sciences SURF program as well. Was that helpful? Okay, good to know. Okay. Um, do you all have any other questions? No? Let's see. Um, Elizabeth, I think Elizabeth sent me an email and I just saw it right before the workshop. Um, but if you all don't have any other questions, that is um, all that we have for you all tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll stick around and um, to help answer other questions. Um, Abby, the uh, PowerPoint will not be posted, but um, the video will be. We just have to uh, remove the sample research proposals um from the video all right thank you all